Welcome back to the channel. You guys knew this was coming. Day three, Tulsa Tough. Let's look and see what we're looking at. Crybaby Hill, which I just pointed out there. Let's look at the profile. Max is out at around 13.7%. Let's look at some of the power that's required to get over this bad boy. And you can see it is not easy. Uh, going up one time may be fine, but if you have to go up about 30 times over the course of an hour, it can uh, build up some fatigue in the legs really, really quickly. And Danny Somerville, or Summerhill, excuse me, is here in the pink jersey after winning day two. Go back and watch that video I did on him um, and how he won. Um, if you want to see how that broke down, Justin up here. We won't be talking about Justin or Corey much today. And that's because this stage is not really suited for sprinters. Danny in the pink jersey. Again, that, if you don't know, is the leader, leader jersey of um, GC jersey of the Tulsa Tough Race. So him and his team, American Cycling, uh, probably approached this a little differently. Giving you guys a quick look at Crybaby Hill here. And you can see it's pretty much uh, straight up. It's a good party atmosphere. If you've never been to Tulsa Tough, I've never raced it, but definitely um, party central, party vibes. You go over uh, Crybaby Hill here. Here's the backside of it. So this course is just about three or four turns, okay? And I want you to see this because, I'm, as you know, I preach, you need to know the course profile, um, whether you're just starting racing or elite racing, or elite level racer. You need to know what course you're facing. You can see there's some padding on the wall there. So that means these guys are gonna be carrying a lot of speed on that downhill on the last turn. Um, so another course profile, so you can also do things like this. So this is our first launched attack of the day. And if you are a breakaway rider or you aspire to be a breakaway rider, excuse me, breakaway rider, um, you wanna watch stages like this because this is definitely the last day with Crabby Blue Hill. It affords the opportunity for breakaway riders to get up the road, climbers to get up the road. So you wanna be looking for your opportunity. This is about the 20 minute mark when you have gone over that bump a few times, fatigue is building up in the legs. Let's roll the dice and see what happens. This is a rider from Denver Disruptors. And if you're solo like this, it's not ideal, but you do wanna get up and hope that somebody comes up to join you. And we see how somebody is coming across here, Sam Boardman from Legion of Los Angeles, coming down the backside of the climb. So to have some company, pretty soon here. I'm, I'm sure that was welcomed because uh, that takes off some of the, the fatigue and exertion that you have to do to stay away from the group. And when you're in a breakaway, if you're just learning racing, you want to stay around threshold if you're solo. Probably take some more power up here going up this climb like this. But once you get a little gap, you want to stay around threshold power and pace yourself. You don't want to go too hard out the gates. And you see two riders from Denver Disruptor just kind of easing up the tempo of the peloton, not chasing down their teammates like Legion was doing on the day two. Again, something I pointed out on my Tulsa video on night two. Go check it out if you haven't already, but Denver Disruptors are not chasing their teammate down because their teammate is up the road in a move. So now we have two uh, of the big power teams, I will say, in this race represented up the road. So I'm really expecting probably American Cycling, if they're interested, they have the GC leaders, so they're probably not. But Butcher Box, uh, Miami Blazers, um, the German team for sure, they've been active all weekend. But I'm not sure where they're at or where they were at at this point in terms of the GC, so they may not be interested in a stage win. But if you're in the Peloton and a move like this is up the road, that's when you want to start thinking about what big teams have missed this move so I can get in it. Right, And you can see the German team making the move up the road. We're not represented, let's try to get across. All right, you got a couple more, they got some company. So this is the type of thing you wanna have your eyes peeled for, especially if you're a solo rider. You know, I'm gonna keep my eye on the German, uh, German riders for sure in this race, see if they wanna jump across um, another Legion rider. And this is showing the gap here. 30 minutes in, halfway point of the race, Sam and the Denver Disruptor Riders getting a nice little break. And right here is when 
We get the catch, they get reabsorbed, but the circle, that's another rider counterattacking. So again, keep in mind, when a breakaway like this does get shut down, you either want to launch the counterattack or you want to be looking for the move or the counterattack so that you can latch on with that rider and go for a ride with them up the road, which happens here. So this is Ty Magner from Legion of Los Angeles and another Denver Disrupt Disruptors uh, rider. Noah, I believe his name is. They, they launch in the counter move. So again, same two teams represented after a shuffle. So if I miss this move, and I'm in the, the peloton, I'm thinking as the German rider, how did I let this happen again? Uh, I need to get up the road. We'll fast forward to 14 laps to go. That break, that break was caught and this is the third break that we're seeing. Again, Denver Disruptors, very, very active this race. And now they got good numbers, two versus one in a three man break towards the last quarter, we'll say, of the race. Um, you see Blazers, they missed the move. German Riders missed the move. Legion missed the move. They're going up there. So again, just another example of what you want to be looking out for, if, whether, you're on your, whether you're on a team or you're racing solo. And they're trying to put some fire in the, the, the tank here, get, a, get away. You probably have one Diver Disruptors rider emptying himself for the other, depending on who is the strongest between that, that duo of teammates and who the course suits the most, right? And the other rider will ride for the riders um, who has the best chances of winning on this course profile, course profile, excuse me. So again, I'm gonna preach that guys, it's very, very important to know the type of course you are racing during a crit or during a road race. We can see those other riders latched on to the three. This is the Peloton, I tell you again, a very reduced bunch, because that hill has basically just deteriorated the, the entire group. Um, and there was 131 riders to start, and now you see it was doing down to that. So this is our leading group here. We've got about six riders. Let's look at the time gap they've uh, established. This is the backside of Crybaby Hill going into the last turn. And that is what we like to call a race winning gap here. Um, they're letting people cross the road and everything. And here comes the Peloton. So who do we see on the front? American Cycling, Danny Summerhill's team. They are probably not interested in chasing, just want to keep Danny safe so he can come along with the jersey because the people in the move up the road are not a threat to his overall GC position. That's why they don't want to chase. I'm just mentioning that. For those who are new to racing, some of you watching probably already know that, but that's why Danny's team is not interested in bringing this back. We got three Denver Disruptor riders, one Legion rider. We have a German rider and another team represented, one to go. So let's see how this plays out, guys. Again, we have the uh, Denver Disruptor riders, the one who's probably emptying himself for his teammate. And looks like he's coming towards the end. You can tell by his pedal, pedal technique, probably kind of fatigued, rightfully so. We've got Sam sitting on the wheel. Let's see if a move goes here. It's a good place to launch one. Got some shuffling. I see some nerves, but not any major moves. A little seated attack. Sam is making sure he's in the wheel. German rider making sure he's in the wheel. And this is where you want to be and this point in the lap, because if somebody goes, you want to go with them. We're down to five riders, so we lost that Denver Disruptor rider who looked like he was a little tired. So again, he did his job, emptied himself for his teammate. Now it's up to his teammate to get the job done after he just completely <laughs> emptied himself. So uh, we're coming into the second to last corner here. Sam moves up. Again, you want to stay towards that front just in case the move goes. Sam pulls off, looks at the group. No one is looking at Sam. I want you to look at their, their helmets. Maybe their eyes follow, but nobody's looking at Sam. Remember where we're at in the course. We're about here. So knowing the course matters. If you want to do an attack, you do it here. As Sam does, they realize it. It's too late. 
Sam has some speed that he's carrying after his sprint going into this downhill section. And this downhill is very, very fast. You can see splits already happening. The race is over for this man here in the back. Sam is out the saddle. He's got a jump on the guys behind him since he was first through that corner. And that's pretty much game over. So I really hope that you learned something from this. This win is so important for Sam because Sam is, if you don't know about Legion, he's usually the domestique of the team, selfless rider, and essentially emptying himself for others on the team. So to win Tulsa Tough day three, this is why there's so much emotion coming from that man right now. This is a big, big race in the United States. And to win this from a break the way he did, the emotion is warranted. So I hope that you guys really, really learned something from this. I would encourage you to go and watch the full race if you want and watch Sam, what he did throughout the race and kind of take, take notes if you need to. Um, because if you're, a breakaway, if you're a breakaway rider, you can learn a lot, right? Or if you aspire to be one, you can learn a lot from winning from a race like this. Just to get a little replay. Thank you guys for joining me on this video and I hope this video was helpful. I'll see you in the next video.